There are three basic types of equations that you encounter most commonly in physics. The first are equations like we've been focusing on thus far in the class, equations that don't involve derivatives, just algebra. So they're called algebraic equations. So you could have a linear equation. We just spent five weeks talking about solving these. That's linear algebra. You could have a polynomial equation, x cubed plus 2x equals 4. You could have a more complicated transcendental equation, e to the x equals sine x to the 7th, log x, whatever it is. If you can write down the equation and there's no derivatives, or integrals, or anything else, just simple algebraic operations, various defined functions, everything is local at some point x, it doesn't depend on what's going on elsewhere, and at some other point, then we call that an algebraic equation. Linear equations, there's lots of great theory, that's linear algebra, you can instantly know how many solutions there are by looking at properties of them and you can algorithmically solve them. Polynomials, again, you know how many solutions, you can solve them, sometimes not in closed form, but at least you know the solutions exist. And then for transcendental equations like this, all bets are off, there might be no solutions, there might be a hundred, there might be infinitely many, you just solve each one separately. Now, if you allow a derivative, then we say it's a differential equation. Now, there's two types of differential equations. There's ordinary differential equation, or DIFFIQ for short. And an ordinary differential equation means only one variable is differentiated with respect to, I guess would be the grammatically correct way of saying that, differentiated with respect to. <laughs> so for example, an ordinary differential equation that comes up a lot in physics would be the second derivative of f squared, second derivative of f plus some constant k squared times f equals zero. This is asking you for a function where you take two derivatives and it becomes proportional to minus the function. So that's sine kx and cosine kx or complex exponentials. This is the kind of function we were just talking about in the Fourier series limit. Uh, so that's an example of a linear differential equation because the function f only appears with derivatives and the value, nothing squared or cubed or nonlinear in F. And there are also nonlinear differential equations. So for example, you could have EF dx squared equals, I don't know, some function F of x cubed plus F of x. It doesn't matter what it is. I didn't, it's just some made up equation. The point is, you have f cubed, you have df dx squared, so it's not linear. Now often you take a whole course on ordinary differential equations. If they're linear, there's lots of good theory, just like for linear algebraic equations. If they're nonlinear, there's some tricks that work in special cases. Um, and at least you have the existence theorem that tells you that if you give for an nth order equation, the value and the nth derivative of the function then you will value the n minus one derivative of the function, then you get a solution, at least locally. We're not really going to talk too much about ordinary differential equations, but we've got one week in this course for partial differential equations. So a partial differential equation is just one where not only do you have an x derivative, you have like a y derivative too or something. You have partial derivatives, so you know these involve partial. So here's a good example. This is called Laplace's equation. The second derivative of f with respect to x 
plus the second derivative of f with respect to y equals 0. Now, it doesn't have to equal 0. If it's equal to 0, that's Laplace's equation. If we give it some, we'll call it rho of x comma y, some specified function, uh, I'm calling it rho because this is like the charge density in electrostatics. But uh, certain proportionality factors that I'm not going to worry about. This is called the Poisson equation. There are other equations that come up a lot. Heat equation, Schrodinger equation is the foundation of quantum mechanics. And these are all partial differential equations. It doesn't have to be called x and y. One variable could be t, like the wave equation for waves on a string or anything. If it involves partial derivatives, then we call it a partial differential equation. And again, we can think about a linear equation like this one. This is a linear equation because f and its derivatives are not squared or done anything nonlinear to. And there are also nonlinear equations which come up. And so a nonlinear equation, just to make one up, might be something like f dx q equals log f. Well, I guess I need a partial derivative, so let's put df dy. That's just some made up nonlinear partial differential equation. And there's some theory for linear differential equations, which we're going to talk about. In nonlinear differential equations, almost nothing is known outside of very special cases. So I work a lot on a nonlinear partial differential equation called Einstein's equation, which governs the effects of gravity in our universe. And there's been maybe 50 years of work since people started studying it mathematically. Seriously, I guess 60 or 70 years of work now. And there's still only a few results about when solutions exist. So partial differential equations, especially nonlinear partial differential equations, are quite hard. And for linear partial differential equations, you can do a lot more. But there's really one workhorse technique that is always used by physicists. It's your first line of attack if you get a partial differential equation that's linear. It's called separation of variables. And that's what we're going to study in the next video.